Okay, so uh, my name is Tina Marie McCulloch and I'm doing an interview with Sound of Series. Yeah, no, um, so I, I'll, be, I'll try to be super quick here. I, um, I started out as an actor about 10 years ago and then I shifted my focus to become a casting director. So, and then I opened my business, Tina Marie Casting. Oh, you know, um, I was always the kid, I always say this, I was always the kid getting into trouble, right? And so, um, you know, I, I had to find like an outlet. So I found like an artistic outlet and I was like, okay, so I did some acting classes and I was like, I really enjoy this. And it, it kind of got me out of trouble. And then that's where it, and then that's where, it, it, that's it. <laughs> Which, well, um, as a, it's, well, because a lot of us are struggling actors, right? Or, well, I was, I, you know, and a lot, it takes a really long time for casting directors to see you in the room. You know, not everybody has the same opportunity as everybody else. It's just not that way, right? Some of us really do struggle more than others. And when I was an actor, I saw so many amazing new actors that just weren't getting an opportunity to get into the room. And it was kind of like the same actors were going in all the time. And I mean, you know, casting directors are busy and they want the right person to just come in and do the job, which is totally understandable. But I was like, there needs to be someone who comes into the industry and kind of changes that and just allows more time for new talent to have an opportunity to, to be seen, right? And so I was like, I think that there's definitely a need for that. And I kind of grew out of wanting to be an actor. And I was like, I felt like my focus should be somewhere else. Like I needed to be somewhere else in the business. And then that's how I became a casting director. I was like, I love actors. I know acting, so I was like, this is the perfect position for me. The actors. That's the favorite thing. I don't do it for any other reason. I do it for the actors only. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think more actors need to know that. I, think, I don't think any other casting director would say any different. Like, we don't do it for the administration part because we do so much of that. Or, you know, we do it for the actors because we want to see actors succeed. We just love the work and, and we love what they do and we respect them and we love their passion. So um, like a director and producer will hire me and then I'll have to go over the script and we'll go over character breakdowns and then I'll get all the information from them and then I will post on a platform that um, lets all the agents know what I'm casting, how much the rate is, what the project is about and then they submit their talent to me of who they think is best for the roles and then I'll go through those submissions which could be hundreds and uh, then I'll pick who I think is gonna be best to audition. And then from there, um, I look at all the tape and I decide from there who I think did the best on tape. And then I will cut like half the actors or more than half and then send what my picks to the director and producer. And then they make their picks from, from that part. And then we do a callback. Um, you know, it's funny is that Chelsea Reese was actually already on the project when I came on. And sometimes that actually happens quite a bit. Um, with bigger projects, the director and producer have, always, have already hired the lead. Not always, but it does happen. In this case, it did happen. And I mean, she's obviously perfect for the part. Chelsea is, is amazing. Yeah. So unfortunately, I didn't get to cast her. She was already on the project. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that's, that's part of the casting process. Like that actually happens quite a bit. Oh, yes, actually. Um, we just don't audition actors and then we're done. There's just so much more than just that. There's so much administration work, like it's mind boggling. And after we're done with the, with the submissions and looking at tape and all, of, all that kind of stuff, I mean, we have to, we actually um, negotiate the deals between the director and producer and the agent. And that is extremely time consuming very time consuming so it's not just you know having the actors come in look at them put them on tape send it to the director and producer it's just not that easy i really wish it was <laughs> but it's not and like there's so much other work um after that like the bonus like the the, the cherry like not the cherry on the cake like the the best part about the job is seeing the actors audition everything else is like work do you know what I mean? Like, that's like the best part. Like we always have a good part to the job and that's why we do what we do because we love that part of the job. Well, that's it. You know, the actors, giving the actors opportunities, watching them on tape. But all the administration stuff, it's not fun. <laughs> but that's just what you have to do in order to do what you love, right? In order to, to see the actors and give them opportunities. 
Um, yeah, interesting question. Actually, I don't have like, um, I don't have someone that I wish to audition. I just, you know, for me, I'm like, I want to see, see a new actor come into the room and be like, this person is going to make it like this person's going to be a star and be able to audition that person and, and, and find them and introduce them to the director and producer and give them the start that they need. That's, 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 that's amazing. I mean, if I could, if, I, if, well, when I do it and cause I, I did do that, you know, you see an actor lift off, lift off and you give them this amazing opportunity. That's, that's like rich. You can't get any better than that. So, oh my God, anything on Netflix. <laughs> I want a job. I want a job on Netflix. <laughs> I want a cast, you know, any show on Netflix would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't be picky, right? Yeah, I mean, if it's on Netflix, it's gonna be good, so. Oh, you know, I think it was last year when I did Itsy Bitsy Spider. Um, it was a short film, and I got to cast Fletcher Donovan and Thomas Nicholson, and they were both, they are both my favorite actors. And I actually, um, when I first started casting, like, three years ago, they were like, two of the first actors I'd ever seen. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, I want to give, um, I want to give these actors an opportunity. I hope one day I can cast them. And I was able to cast them like three years later, both on the same project, which just blew my mind. It was amazing. It was such a, it was such a great feeling. I was so happy when they got the part. I was just over the moon and the film's doing really well. It's going to be streaming on a, on CBC, which is a network. And, and yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully they get the exposure because they're both terrific actors and they deserve Huge success. Yeah, um, you know, it's funny is that a lot of people actually think that casting directors have a choice of who of who gets the part. And actually, it's not our choice. That's, that's not up to us. That's actually up to the director and producer. When I get my voice is when I get to look at the tapes and then I narrow down the tapes of who I think gets to go in front of the director and producer. So that's when I get my voice. And after that, I don't have a say. I mean, they might ask me, they might be like, well, what do you think about this actor or that actor? But ultimately it's, it's up to the director and producer and I really have no say in who gets booked. So, um, like I said, my say is when I, wh who I show to them. I think it would be to have people understand what casting directors do, you know, and know that we are agents and understand the process of what we do in our job. And um, like, this is really a skill, right? Like they need casting directors, directors and producers are just too busy and casting is a skill, right? And it's, it's it, it really is its own animal. So I, the, that's what I would change about my job is to have, have people like you be more interested in what casting directors do. And so, you know, um, so people just have a better understanding yeah. of what, of, 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 you know, just, what it takes yeah and i mean you have to like you know there's a director and producer which they can be you know very intimidating <laughs> you know what i mean right i mean they're expecting you they're expecting you know top actors and they want you to deliver and you know they're they're the ones who hired you so there's a lot of pressure on you and i mean this is the film industry there's a lot of money involved yeah. and when there's lots of money involved there's do you know what i mean there's just the pressure is like way higher and you know you want to make sure that that your clients are happy Right. And I mean, you don't want them to turn around and be like, we don't like anyone. You know what I mean? So you have to really know actors and, and have like, there's like a feeling that you get, like it really is an instinct, right? You either have it or you don't. No, you know, I've actually been really lucky. The people I've worked with, um, have just been incredible. Honestly, honestly, I have and yeah, I haven't had any bad, thank God. <laughs> I don't know if it'll ever happen. I mean, I'm sure eventually, you know, somewhere in my career, I might have a bit of a bump, but I've been really, really lucky. The people I've worked with have just been phenomenal.